Hi everyone. I'm going to do a painting tonight that is kind of based on the swirl technique. Uh, yeah, pretty much that that's how the story goes. It's based on the swirl technique. And I am hoping to create an orb like painting. Let's see how it goes anyway. All right, let's run through the paints. I have a uh, Crafty Color Raw Umber and Yellow Orange from Montmartre, the Anita's Hunter Green, Montmartre Light Green, Montmartre Cadmium Yellow, Radical Pearl White and another Montmartre Mid Green. All of these have been freshly mixed. I'm very excited to say that I'm nearly, I've nearly used up all of the um, pre-mixed paints in the little pots and pretty much have started afresh. Like it's great because I didn't know how much of a reaction and issues that the pre-mixed ones were causing. So very excited about that. Paints are mixed at approximately equal parts with the Flood Flow Troll. And for this pour in particular, there is no silicon in any of it. A couple of the colours have a dash of water just to get the right consistency. And I'm going to use this cup, paper cup, to use for the swirl. All right, this is an approximate 6mm MDF round board. And you can see it's already grey. So ready to pour on. So what I'm going to do is I'm aiming to put the brown and the orange in together and that's the only thing I wanted to use the orange for so I will try and scrape out every bit of it. And a dash of the hunter green, the darkest, into that pot as well. So I'm going to give it a bit of a bit of a mix, and this is going to be the outer edge. All right, so I will just, <coughs> excuse me, spread this out, kind of muddying the colours a bit too much doing that. Let's see hmm. So just tilting a little, trying to get it to spread out with some of the colour variations that are already running through it. So. I will just drag it out because it give it something to run along as it spreads once I add the swirl into the middle because you find with the swirl uh, 
that the outside colours that you start pouring first generally roll under each other as it spreads across the canvas or the wood or whatever you're using. So I thought perhaps the layer of the brown which is meant to look earthy that's why I've chosen these colours will help for it to glide out not and not roll so let's see okay back to here so we're going to start what goes in first comes out last so I would like a little tiny tiny dash of the mid green not even going to cover the whole bottom of the cup. Then this is the light green with the cadmium yellow mixed in just a little with that one. Okay, now I want to use the radical pearl white to completely cover because I want quite a large section of that. And then come back in with the oops, wrong one. The lightened green with the yellow. Trying to layer them on top of each other so that they don't blend in. Then the light green on its own. There's only a slight variance in that. We'll add the hunter green, just enough to cover that level and then I'm going to come back in with a blend of the greens. Just a little bit of that one. Oh, that was the hunter green. Yeah, that's mid green. Give that a bit of a stir. Layer this one on top. And then fill the rest with the Hunter green. Okay, we're set to go. So I am going to torch this, um, but it will be just to clear the bubbles away. So the air bubbles. So, right, let's give it a squeeze and aim for the middle. Give me a gentle swirl. Watch as the colours slowly creep out. Changing from the dark, blending with those lighter shades, coming into that pearl white and That's how it looks. So there certainly wasn't enough pearl white for what I was thinking, but let's go. So slowly rotate it round. I would very much like to keep as much of the circular pattern shape as possible. Try and push out that brown.
perhaps I didn't do the brown close enough to the edge and the brown is actually rolling over itself as you slowly go around yeah but I can see the shimmer from the pearl white very beautiful we're losing some roundness try and just slowly pushing that to the edges I can see some bubbles, so I will definitely need to torch. And we don't have much more tilting to go, so that's great. And I think, oh, it's looking great. Go, just bring it back to the middle. That looks about right there. Wow! <laughs> I'm stoked. It didn't the brown uh, didn't do what I thought it might, and perhaps that was because I put the layer in too small and then tried to just. It had dried where I'd used my fingers to spread it out. But yeah, I think that still looks very effective and I can still use that. So just clear out some air bubbles and see them all popping. It's great. So there are some touch-ups required around the outside, but that is not a huge dilemma. Let's have a look. So around here. It's great just try and match, match the colour for the edge that is right near the edge. It says green, add green from the drip offs. It says brown, go with that. And it looks terrific. I'm really happy with it. This one is a, uh, and it has an extra. Uh, process. I do have plans for this. It is a background. So this is another part one. But even on its own, like that's stunning. The greens are nice and vibrant. The brown kicking off around the edges here with the orange. Uh, that was, like I mentioned before, that was to look earthy. And I think it still really helped with that. So, quite pleased. Okay, just a little bit more. Bit of green there. Yeah, so I have a few more clocks as well. So I need to um get some of those done but have you got any suggestions for colors for the background of a clock or perhaps a a technique that you would like to see me try <laughs> no guarantees though not everything works all the time but there's lots of fun in, in getting creative. There we 
go. Oh, and I, I am got. Uh, I really am pleased with this. It's going to look amazing. And that looks like all the sides are done. All right. Well, that's sat now for a while, so you can see that some of the reactions have come out. And this is not from silicon. Uh, it is just from the reactions between the paints and the flow troll. There's what, one, two, three, four different brands of paint in this. So, yeah, we'll see how it dries. I know it's going to be amazing, but I'll just bring you down and give you a closer look. All right. So, how vibrant is that green? I really do think um, that adding the yellow to the green was, see the shimmer? Where'd it go? There. Uh, I've heard Anne-Marie Ritterhoff say that she has a green color that she doesn't like, but she adds a dash of yellow to it and it is a very pretty green so i thought why not do the same just to add a varying green color varying shade of green and i have found it is had it has had remarkable results so that looks awesome all right guys you can see the shimmer isn't that beautiful fabulous all right there you go thanks so much for being with me and remember be fabulous <laughs> bye for now